Welcome biologists, this session we're going to take a look at the factors that impact upon photosynthesis. Uh, so for this you do need to be familiar with the previous stages, the light dependent independent reaction. And we're going to focus on these things here that could impact upon photosynthesis. So first of all, if there is no light or little light, then this means I'm not going to get as much NADPH or reduced NADP or ATP from the light dependent stage, which means my GP cannot be phosphorylated or reduced as easily to form an ATP. So this means I'm going to get a buildup of GP. I'm not going to get as much as that changing over, but my, a my TP, sorry, is going to decrease in concentration in the plant because that this side of the process can still occur. So you need to think of it a bit like a ring road and like a crash within the ring road and where that buildup will be, the buildup of traffic, if that helps. Now, the next one is a low carbon dioxide concentration. So this will happen where I've got stomatal closure. Now, don't forget the stomata is going to close if, it, for example, it's a hot day and the plant wants to try to conserve its water by stopping or helping to prevent evaporation through the stomata by closing the stomata. So as a result of this, I'm going to get a low concentration of carbon dioxide. Now, if I've got a low concentration of carbon dioxide, this means that I'm going to get less carbon fixation. So I'm going to get less of my IUBP binding to my carbon dioxide to form GP. So this means that my GP can still be formed into TP. My TP into IUBP can still occur. So I'm going to get a buildup of IUBP and a reduction of my GP. And the last one, temperature. Temperature can impact again on carbon fixation. So there's an enzyme involved here called Rubisco. And Rubisco, if the temperature increases, it will um, perform at a much higher level. So therefore, I'm going to get more kinetic energy. I'm going to get more substrate enzyme substrate complexes, and I'm going to get more GP formed. But equally, if I get a decrease in temperature, I'll get a decrease in GP form. So that's a big synoptic link there back to enzymes. Now, these are the graphs that you may get in relation to that. So again, like I've just 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 been discussing there a build up of certain products or a decrease of certain products so it might be worth just pausing that and having a figure out of why things are building up and why things are decreasing and it's all to do with that cycle that we've just gone through there here's another example where i've got a higher carbon dioxide concentration a low carbon dioxide concentration that impacts on gp and iubp and why now, in terms of practicals here, I might be given this one or a potometer experiment. So in this particular experiment, what we have is a chloroplast solution. This is normally spinach that's been ground up. And what we do is we add DC pip, which is blue. So when it's mixed with a green solution, which is the chloroplast solution, it goes like a dark blue green. Um, however, when the DC pip is um, reduced, it's reduced by the electron hydrogen um, being added onto it. The DC pip will become colourless. So this is instead of the reduced NADP being formed, my DC pip will be reduced instead. So in the first tube here, this is my control. I get a control to allow a comparison and to see if what I've actually changed in this experiment has made a difference. So the first one is a control here. I get no change at all. I'm, I've got no DC pip and my chloroplasts are just undergoing photosynthesis as usual. In my second boiling tube here, I have DC pip and unboiled chloroplasts. So what happens here is my chloroplasts are undergoing photosynthesis and the... Um, hydrogen ions and the electrons instead of going to the um, NADP to be reduced it's going to the DC pip which is turning um, colorless and it'll go green in this third one here um, it's covered up so I'm not going to have any light dependent reaction occurring there and therefore um, I'm not going to have any reduction occurring because um, I'm not going to get any chemosmosis. And in the last one as well, because I've boiled the chloroplasts, I've damaged the membranes, again, I'm going to get no chemosmosis occurring. So therefore, my DC pip is not going to go colourless and I'm going to get remain that dark bluey green colour. Now, a potometer, you need to know how to use and set these up. And you can change multiple different things here within a potometer in order to see the impact upon photosynthesis. So we need to cut the shoot, the stem here, at an angle to increase the surface area for the xylem. Uh, we also cut it underwater to prevent any, any um, air bubbles getting into the xylem. We need to make sure we dry the leaves because they can um, wet leaves can impact upon transpiration. Um, we also need to make sure that I've got no air bubbles within my apparatus because we don't want any air bubbles to get into my xylem. Um, and we also need to make sure that I do in induce at least one air bubble so that I can see how much water has been uptaken by the plant. Now, in order to measure the uptake, I need 